Hi folks, Harold Spud here. I'm going to show you how the Raspberry Pi dashboard camera works because it's my favourite thing at the moment and it's a little bit complicated so I'll just show you, it's kind of like that, It's um, there's a lot of bits inside it. I'm going to show you how it works and hopefully enable you to build one of your own if you so wish. Um, it's been really useful and it, so far it's showed me how boring my journeys to work are. Well, here we go. Okay, let's have a quick look at the camera. Um, this is the HD Raspberry Pi camera. There you go. It's got little um, anti-vibration mountings underneath it there, at the front. There's the camera with a wide-angle lens. It's a mobile phone wide-angle lens put on top of it. And yellow LED in the middle. Array of five LEDs. Array of five LEDs again. And a light-dependent resistor here that will tell it whether it's day or night. So that's the front of the camera, and it sits on the dashboard. OK chaps and chapesses, let's have a quick look at the rear of the camera. This is the bit that I see when I'm driving, or trying to drive. And it's got a number of features on the back. There's a switch here, which is the on-off switch for the Pi. And it just does on or off, and it's got batteries inside, so it will actually power itself now, but not for very long. We have... let's look at the LEDs. Red light tells me that the 5 volt power is there for the Pi. Orange LED tells me there's 12 volts coming in from the car. And yellow LED tells me that the Python program is running. This is fed from a GPIO output. And the Python program will flash it on and off. So that tells me if the Pi is alive. Uh, green switch here is to shut the machine down. So you press it and the Python po program will find it and shut the machine down. And flash the LED to tell me it's sh shutting down. And the red one is a strange and different switch, it's a push to break switch. Because once this is shut down, if the power's still on, you have to interrupt the power to reboot it. So when you get back in the car again, just press that briefly, let go, and it will boot up again. Underneath here, there's the 5.5mm coaxial power socket, um, which feeds the cable, which feeds from the car, and that's the 12 volts in. So there we go, there's the camera. Nice sometimes. OK folks, let's have a look inside, shall we? We're going to take the lid off, which is this wonderfully carefully shaped lid which I made earlier with the thing for the front for the camera. And that's come off now and we can have a look inside. So let's have a look what we have inside. OK, here we have a Raspberry Pi. Um, there's GPIO inputs and outputs along here. Um, here we have a peripherals board which is fed by the Raspberry Pi and it uses ULN2803 integrated circuits that drive the LEDs. The Raspberry Pi outputs themselves aren't really powerful enough to drive an LED, or not very much anyway. Um, notice that we've put at the side here, we've arranged it so that the USBs are available so I can plug in um, and leave USB key in there for output the video and also I can plug in my Wi-Fi dongle in there to connect to it and have a mess around with it and update the program once in a while. Okay, what else do we have? We have a battery pack here. This is, well, 6 volts supposedly but they're 1.2 volt cells so we've got 4.8 volts nominal. Um, have to be careful with this but it'll provide more or less 5 volts for the Raspberry Pi just for a few seconds when we shut down so that it doesn't get um, unexpectedly shut down and has to go through all of that fixing the file system thing or corrupting the file system. Okay, this little thing here is a thing I purchased on Amazon and it's a switch mode power uh, regulator. It takes 12 volts in or more than 12 volts and regulates it down to 5 volts. I've tuned it to about well 5.8 but I might just wind it up a little bit further. There's a little uh, screw here um, and that adjusts the voltage coming out at the moment, 5.8 volts. When I finish with it today, probably 6 volts, just to give it a little bit more oomph to the battery. And this little board here, that I will need to explain, is the battery charging circuit. Right, OK chaps and chapesses, let's look in a little bit more detail here at some of the connections here. Um, at the front, um, I have here all these little connections here. These are outbound connections to the LEDs 
which are down the front down there, the five green LEDs and the yellow and the five more on the other side. So if I go just to the other side here you'll see the connections here inside. Um, on this side here I've got two wires from the LDR and one goes to plus 3.3 via a resistor and one goes to the signal on the GPIO. OK, camera's mounted on little 2mm nylon nuts and bolts here. Bit fiddly but you can do it no problem at all. And the ULN2803 is down the middle down there. And these connections here go from the GPIO and they feed the ULN2803. This is the input, input to the ULN2803 and they turn the LEDs on and off. So, on the Raspi, again these little ribbons here, it's nice to have them five at a time, they're the um, LED feeds. The GPIO has got 40 pins on it, it's a B plus model and it's important that you keep track of which ones go where. And you can see that um, over here I've used colours for helping me. Orange is plus 3.3 volts, red is plus 5 volts, black is 0 volts, anything else is a signal cable. So let's have a look at the rest of it. OK folks, let's start with the battery charging circuit and the power supply circuit. So on the left hand side, let's just imagine our 12 volts comes in here from the car. So this is a car supply. Um, we feed our voltage reg. So our voltage uh, supply regulator that comes in here, this is the one with the tunable output and we come out about plus 5.8 volts and like I said before I might bring that up to 6 volts and it has a feed to earth, so there we go. It's got an earth down there, so it's 0 volts down there. Um, so we really want to just feed our Raspberry Pi, so over here on the outside is the Pi and it takes plus 5 volts in here, or so it would like. There it is there. Um, how are we going to do that? We're going to have to put at least one diode in series with it. And this is a 1N5820 shot key diode. So it's got a low voltage drop across it. Normally it would be 0.6, this is about 0.3 or 4. So it's not a bad diode. Um, what else do we need? We need the switch. That's going to be our switch. That's the toggle switch on the front of the thing. Oops, my lines don't line up. So this is about plus 5 volts here. 5.8, maybe it's 5.5, something like that, which the Pi is still happy with. So, normal operation, that'll work fine. What I want to do is to put in here um, a plus uh, 6 volt battery. This is our rechargeable 4 times uh, 1.2 volts, actually in fact it's 4.8 volts, let's be honest here. 4.8 volts in here. And we want to charge it, and we want it to discharge and feed the Pi. So for discharging, we want rapid discharge, we'll put a diode down here, which again is a 1N5820 shock key diode. But for charging, I don't want it to charge with too much current, so I'm going to put a resistor here, and this resistor is actually going to be 2 times 4.7 ohms in series and they're going to have to be half watt at least I think if not one watt I'll have to check up on that later on so that's our circuit that feeds power to the Pi and it charges the battery and when this voltage is cut here when the voltage is cut then this battery will then feed the Pi with about well if it's 4.8 loses about 0.3 maybe 4.5 volts across there or maybe a little bit more and the Pi should be happy with that for a few minutes while it shuts down. OK, what else do we need? We need to put in a voltage bridge across here um, so that this here uh, goes to GPIO 12 volt sense. And this is going to have to knock this down here so it's going to be 0 to 3.3 volts instead of 0 to 12 volts. So we want about a quarter of it across there. We'll choose the right resistors. So that's a sensor goes to the GPIO. What else do I want? I wanted an LED across here, so I've got an LED, that's my uh, red LED, uh, that tells me I've got plus 5 volts. And that's it. Is that enough? That's plenty. OK folks, this is the GPIO configuration. Uh, pin numbers are shown in the circles here, and yet you can see which ones I'm using. So I'm using pin 7, pin 11, 13, 15, 
and 19 for some of the green LEDs. That's five of them on one side. A uh, yellow centre LED is GPIO9. Um, the yellow LED, the Python run indication on the rear, is on GPIO11. And then the five green ones are down here, down the bottom, which you can't see. Hey, never mind. Um, and the other GPIOs I'm using, which is kind of important, is the light sense. That's an input. So that's GPIO input. And I'm using the 12 volt voltage sense as 20. I'll switch those around. So 20 is the 12 volt voltage sense, and that tells me whether the 12 volts is connected. And the other one is the light sense that tells me if it's bright or dark. Uh, GPIO 16 is used as a shutdown switch. So the shutdown switch um, shorts to earth, and we'll bring that one down to uh, logic zero if I want to shut down. OK, let's have a quick look at the LEDs and how they're driven. Now I've used the ULN2803, which has this basic circuit for each channel. Um, the 2K7 resistor on input is built into the IC, so you just take your GPIO out, GPIO, and plonk it straight on the end of there, and it feeds this, and you've got an open circuit, uh, open collector circuit here, so you need to use the earth, and then we go up to plus 5 volts. I don't need to do 3.3 .3 anymore because we're not talking to the GPIO here, it's, it's come straight across there, so I can put plus 5 volts in and then a suitable resistor for each of these LEDs here. Um, and I've worked out what the voltages are. Yellow LED, 2 volts at 20 milliamps. It's a bit of R equals V over I here to do, and such like. And I've come to the conclusion that um, I'm going to use 200 ohms as the series resistor for all of the front LEDs on the array. So there we go. So that's the front LED sorted out. And what else do we need to do? Anything else? No, not a lot. Nothing there. That's, oh, the LDR. Um, what have I used? I've used a 2.2K. Let's have a quick look, sorry. 2.2K resistor here to pull up. Um, and I've got a resistor here. I had to choose this one here. And you can adjust that with the pull up, put up, down command in Python if you don't get it right. And work out roughly what the resistance of your LDR is in different situations. So I've used a pull down 3.3K resistor. And I think I probably wish I'd used a slightly different one. But you can work, you can have a, have a mess around with the one you've got. Because LDRs are all different, I guess. Um, power indicator 680 ohms. Backup power indicator 680 ohms. Orange LED, red LED. What else? Not a lot, really. Um, this is, oh, there we go. The 12 volt indicator 1.2k on 1.0k. Is that right? That looks about right, yeah. Hmm, interesting. Oh yeah, that's right, because it's a 5 volt input, that's fine, that's alright. This takes a 5 volt input to the ULN, and the ULN then does a pull up to 3.3 .3 volts for the GPIO. Oh dear me, can I remember all this? Probably not now. Oh look, there's another one of those. And, actually this one's quite interesting here. These are all my little schematics. You make sure you, you draw the stuff out when you're doing it. This is my schematic of the board for the diode, for the charging circuit for the battery. So I need to um, know exactly what's going where. And it connects to the input and output to power and to the battery itself. And there's my little uh, circuit diagram there with the two 4.7 ohm battery, uh, resistors in series. Enough. ULN2803, footprint drawing. Elevation drawing, more calculations. There's a lot of stuff to do here. And there we go. Charging circuit. Oh, and there we go. Uh, there's the rear. I was just planning out the LEDs. In fact, the, yeah, that's right, LEDs. Orange plus 12, run light, green shutdown switch. And that is actually the red. That's the reboot switch. That means start up again, and the 12 volts in. So it's important to plan all these things out when you're doing it. Cool, do me. That's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of stuff. I think I've spent more time here drawing than I have building. And there we go.